All right. Hi everyone. That's filtering in. We are going to wait a couple minutes to start the presentation um, to give people a couple more minutes to join. No, oh, excuse me, I'm bugging my throat. <clears> throat> oh. Well, in the interest of time, welcome everybody. Thank you for attending the second public meeting for Sullivan Park. Sorry, I have a bug in my throat. <clears> throat> I am Danielle Mellett, a landscape architect in design and project management, and also DCR's project manager for Sullivan Park. Others from DCR attending this meeting are Jenna Johnson, Deputy Chief of Design and Project Management, and Dan Cushing, Director of Public Engagement. The consultant team will introduce themselves shortly. Next slide. Excuse me. So going over some meeting logistics, you'll have the opportunity to submit comments after this meeting. The website link is provided below. It is www.mass.gov backslash forms backslash DCR dash public dash comments. And there are two ways to ask questions during tonight's meeting. You can use the chat feature and type in your questions or comments, or you can raise your hand using the Teams function and you will be given permission to unmute and speak. Please note that this <clears throat> public information meeting will be recorded and that the recording is public record. Next slide. We would like to thank Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Polito, Secretary Theoridis, and Acting Commissioner Cooper. And we welcome everyone to tonight's presentation. Next slide. DCR's mission statement is to protect, promote, and enhance our commonwealth of natural, cultural, and recreational resources for the well being of all. Next slide. And the purpose of tonight's presentation is to show the revised design that the design team has completed based on the first public presentation held in July of 2020, which incorporates the comments and feedback we heard from that meeting and from comments made during the public comment period. Next slide. And now I'll turn this over to Pam from Shadley Associates. 
Thank you, Danielle. So I'm Pam Shadley, landscape architect and principal with Shadley Associates, and we're the uh, lead consultants for the design of this project working with the DCR. So what are we going to do tonight? We're, I'm going to talk about the project team and give you a, a brief update of where we've uh, come from in the course of this project. We're going to go through the final design plan. Danielle will talk about cost investment and the next pieces of the schedule. And then there's additional information, including the recording of this presentation that will be available to you after the meeting. So the design team, the Department of Conservation and Recreation is the client. We, Shadley Associates, are the prime consultant. We're landscape architects, but we can't do this alone. We have uh, five subconsultants who are providing their expertise for this project, and I'll, I'm just going to read them off. Our civil engineer and our permitting specialist and wetland specialist is Par Corporation. Our fountain designer is Delta Fountains. Our surveyor is Dawood Engineering. Our electrical engineer is Thompson Engineering. And our irrigation designer is Irrigation Consulting, and we couldn't develop the work of this new park without their help. So where we've come from and how we've gotten to this point, um, Shadley Associates was hired in January of 2020, so it's almost two years. In July of 2020, pandemic or no pandemic, we had public meeting number one, and at that point we presented design alternatives for public comment. Then in April, I'm sorry, July of 2020, we presented those comments. In April of 2021, we developed 25% level documents based upon the public's comments. We tested those uh, documents by doing site investigations, including test pits and borings, which help us determine the structural design and the stormwater design. In September of this year, we submitted 50% construction documents. And here we are at public meeting number two, in November of 2021. So I'm going to turn it over to our project manager, Skylar Chick, who will talk about the project. Thank you, Pam, and uh, thank you everyone for attending. My name is Skylar Chick, and I'm a licensed landscape architect and a senior associate with Shadley Associates. So before uh, diving into the design, these next few slides will provide some site context. Uh, Sullivan Park, as you all know, is located along Revere Beach Boulevard at approximately the midpoint of the Revere Beach Reservation. Owned by the Department of Conservation and Recreation, this 1.95 acre site, which is identified in red on the screen, you can see where my cursor is, um, is really an important public open space. You can see the dense neighborhoods to the north and to the west and to the south of the site and Rumney Marsh uh, to the northwest. The beach to the east certainly draws many people, but we do believe that this improved park will also become a desirable destination as well. This slide depicts the project site in greater detail. You can see that the site is bounded by Revere Beach Boulevard and Revere Beach to the east, which is the right side of the screen, and, by, uh, and bound by Revere Street to the south. On the west side of the site, where the left side of the screen is a linear strip of land that's owned by National Grid, and further to the west is Diamond Creek. Uh, the city of Revere recently constructed a bridge across Diamond Creek, which connects Sears Street and the adjacent neighborhood to the National Grid property. And if you can see my cursor, that's approximately where that bridge is located. The DCR owns a linear strip uh, between National Grid and the adjacent development at 320 Revere Beach Boulevard. That adjacent development is also brand new. Uh, it's a residential development recently completed uh, at the northern uh, portion of the site. Currently, the project site contains an under underutilized ball field, which is well below street level and is subject to coastal winds and lots of sun. You can see the the baseball diamond and the outfield and the graphic on the screen, the edges of the site where the cursor is, are hillsides that slope down into the park from the adjacent roadways. This slide includes photos of the existing conditions around the site. Photo one is DCR's linear strip of land that's behind the new development 
Uh, in that photo, the view is looking towards the park to the south. Photos two, three, and four are views into the park from different points along Revere Beach Boulevard. You can also see in photo four, the completed development at 320 Revere Beach Boulevard. Photo five shows the existing hillside between the park and Revere Street to the south. And this particular view is looking to the west towards Diamond Creek, which is within the tree line in the distance. And photo six is taken also from the hillside, but looking the other way towards Revere Beach Boulevard. And you can actually see the slivers of the ocean beyond. These are the project goals which were adapted from the first public meeting in July of 2020. Uh, so the goals are to create a passive community park. The park should be universally accessible and compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act, also known as the ADA. It should provide a variety of activity choices, encourage physical exercise and movement, accommodate social interaction in a variety of spaces, and reintroduce native vegetation for shade, habitat, and climate resiliency. As Pam mentioned in July of 2020, the first public meeting for Sullivan Park was held. At that meeting, we showed two concept design alternatives, which are both illustrated here. Uh, the intent of that meeting was to get the public's feedback to hear what you want in your park. So each plan showed different walkway alignments, different park amenities, and they were intended to be different in order to get good feedback. And we heard your feedback at that first public meeting and the subsequent comments that we received. Um, the most frequent comments uh, for what you would like are bocce courts with seating, a water feature that is interactive for kids, a variety of fitness opportunities, a large lawn area for activities and events, and lots of walkways with benches. From that information, we developed the final design. This plan incorporates your comments to create a park design that is intended to be inclusive and accommodate as many activities as possible for diverse enjoyment. And here is the final design plan that we developed based on those comments. So some of the main features of this design include a plaza that's along Revere Beach Boulevard, a bocce terrace, and a great lawn with amenities surrounding it. There is also a rear access point from the adjacent development at Revere Beach, 320 Revere Beach Boulevard. The DCR is currently working with that abutter to secure an easement for that access. And this view also shows Diamond Creek up here and the existing city bridge that connects to the neighborhood uh, at Sears Street. To make it easier to see the proposed design, we'll enlarge the views and I'll show images of our design elements in the next several slides. So let's start at the east end or the bottom of the screen uh, for the area that's near Revere Beach Boulevard. So in this enlarged view, again, you can see the paved plaza, which is adjacent to Revere Beach Boulevard. This uh, would include concrete pavement, decorative banding and hexagonal pavers to define different areas of the plaza. There are also game tables and benches located under a canopy of brand new deciduous shade trees. The site currently does not have very much shade at all. So something that is really important to our design is introducing native coastal tolerant tree species that will provide that necessary shade to make this an enjoyable space. The plaza can be used for a whole host of activities. It can be for flexible events. It can just be people who want to play games, chess or checkers on the game tables or have a coffee. Um, what's nice about this plaza is that it's elevated approximately at street level. So you can look to the east and see the beach and the ocean across the street, or you can sit on the other side, the western side, and look into the park and down at the bocce terrace the edge of the plaza 
is held by a low granite retaining wall, which is approximately two or so feet above the bocce terrace, which we're showing in the middle of the screen. Uh, the bocce terrace includes two bocce courts constructed of synthetic turf. They're linear, run parallel to each other. The terrace is uh, constructed of concrete pavement and is surrounded by benches and little seating areas at the two ends. We're also proposing low planting material around this paved area to define the space. And again, uh, brand new deciduous shade trees to provide that shade that really is important. On the uh, street side, we are proposing two new park entrances, one to the north and one to the south. Each will include a granite sign pier, which will um, introduce and welcome visitors to Sullivan Park. We are also proposing a concrete pad here with bicycle parking posts and a water bottle filler. And I will show images of these amenities on later slides. All of the walkways that we are proposing are paved with asphalt. They will all be universally accessible. Uh, so anyone of any ability can use any of these walkways. On the left side of the screen, which is the southern end of the site, we're proposing a new walkway that runs along an existing retaining wall and connects to the sidewalk at Revere Street and to the neighborhoods uh, over at Ocean Avenue and further to the west. As I mentioned earlier, there is an existing hillside along this edge of the park. We are proposing to plant trees and some shrub planting along that hillside and then seed it with a meadow seed mix. And that meadow seed mix would include native grasses and wildflowers. It'll help to stabilize the bank. It'll be much more environmentally friendly. Um, for many years, that hillside was paved with asphalt and really served no environmental purpose. Uh, so we are looking at ways to reintroduce native vegetation, ways to make this park much more environmentally friendly. Uh, as also in that vein, we are including bioretention areas to treat stormwater, and you can see that on the screen here. These are located around the site to collect surface stormwater, uh, so st rainwater that runs off the adjacent pavements will be collected in these basins where they can infiltrate. Um, the basins will be planted again with that meadow seed mix, um, but would be planted with water tolerant uh, species. And then the last thing on this slide, in the upper right side of the screen, is a proposed water feature. This is a circular paved area with concrete pavement. The inner portion will have flush water jets, and th those jets will be surrounded by granite block seats, so people can come and sit there, watch the water, people can play in the water if they want to. So this water feature is intended to be interactive. It includes two rings of water jets. The outer ring will have eight vertical water jets with four fog features, and the lower left image uh, illustrates the intent. The inner ring will include four shower spray jets, also with fog, and the lower right image shows that shower spray jet. The maximum water height is intended to be four feet, and there will be an activator bollard adjacent to the water feature. So what that means is anyone can come into the park and they can push the button on the activator bollard and the water feature will come on for a predetermined period of time and it can be used and if people are done they can walk away and it will automatically shut off or if people want to continue using it if the kids are having fun and they want to keep splashing in the water then you just push the button again um, this can also be choreographed so that we can have water jets and fog coming at the same time or in alternating patterns. The upper left image is an example of the bocce courts. So again, these would be synthetic turf surfacing. They will have curved edges with bumper rails, which uh, will be used to protect bocce balls. We are also proposing ADA accessible access points in the sides of each of these bocce courts so that folks of all abilities can participate. The lower right uh, photo is an example of a paved plaza with tree canopy, interesting paving patterns, 
and space for flexible activities. So it could be Tai Chi, it could be um, other kinds of events like fairs, there could be tents set up, um, other community events. These next few slides show the site furnishings that we're proposing for the project. The site furnishings are intended to match those that are existing at Revere Beach Reservation, uh, such as the six foot long bench with a back and this backless bench, which will be located at the plaza. These are ornamental in style to match the character of the reservation. They will have metal arms and legs, which will be powder coated black and the seats and the backs on the backed benches will have Ipe, will be Ipe wood. So very durable uh, wood. As I mentioned, the plaza will inc include tables and fixed chairs. The tables will have uh, checker slash chessboard tops. Um, and then these will also match the other site furnishings where they will be constructed of Ipe wood and all of the metal supports and arms and frames will be um, powder coated black. The bicycle parking will look like the lower left image. They will be galvanized steel posts uh, where you can park two bikes at each post and these match what are currently located at the reservation. The site will also include trash receptacles. These will have liners and they will have built in rain covers and DCR will maintain those trash receptacles as they currently do along the reservation and the beach. As I mentioned earlier, there will also be a water bottle filler. So this is an outdoor station. The middle column has the water bottle filler. There will also be an accessible side drinking fountain extension and at the base will be a pet drinking station. So while Sullivan Park is not intended to be a dog park, DCR parks do welcome leashed dogs, and this is an accommodation for your furry friends. So now let's take a look at the west end of the site or the upper part of the screen. This area is centered around the Great Lawn, which is approximately a third of an acre in size. It will slope gently uh, from the Bocce Terrace, which is the bottom of the screen, uh, to the top of the screen towards the walkways and towards Diamond Creek at the west end. This great lawn will be surrounded by an asphalt loop walkway, which again is accessible. Um, we're trying to create a looped walking network so people can reach all of the destinations in an accessible and convenient way. In the lower right side of the screen, we are proposing fitness equipment. This is along the existing retaining wall at the abutting development. Uh, there are five proposed pieces and they will be located on poured in place rubber surfacing. That surfacing is similar to what you see in playgrounds. It's a soft cushion layer, it's a resilient surfacing and it is porous uh, so water can drain through it. We are also proposing site lighting around all of the main walkways in this park, and later I will show you an image of what is being proposed. Uh, to the west or above the fitness equipment area is another one of those bioretention areas to treat stormwater. This is collecting stormwater from the, the walkways and the paved areas on this side of the site. We are also proposing lots of tree planting uh, along the existing wall at the abutting property, we're proposing a variety of evergreen tree species to provide screening. Along the National Grid property at the upper side of the screen, we're proposing a mix of deciduous and evergreen trees as well as ornamental trees. This amber color that you see throughout here, this represents the meadow seed mix. So that will again will include native grasses and wildflower species. We are also proposing benches on concrete pads throughout the site and here you can see them all around the walkways. Each bench pad has a four foot wide companion space adjacent to the bench. That space can be used for someone who's in a wheelchair so that they can wheel up and sit beside someone who's sitting on the bench 
or these companion spaces could be used for strollers or for walkers, so they do serve a flexible use. Um, the last piece here is that we are also proposing a shade shelter on a small concrete plaza. That shade shelter could be used for events and activities, it could be little concerts, or it could be used uh, to provide shaded seating below. So that shade shelter will be hexagon shape and, and it will have a cupola on the top. It will be constructed of steel with powder coat finishes. The roof will be a multi rib metal roof with a nice steep slope, as you can see in this image on the left. The underside of that roof deck will have a sealed wood um, underside. The size is approximately 24 feet wide and about 21 feet tall. The frame and the post will be uh, powder coated black, and then the roof will be a lighter color to reflect the sun which is very helpful in mitigating the urban heat island effect. Urban areas that have a lot of impervious surfaces or dark colors and pavements tend to attract more heat. So if we can reflect that heat, it helps to keep the site cooler. Uh, this shade shelter will also include an interior light. It will have electrical receptacles, which can be used for the events that might occur here. And there is also a weather vane proposed on the cupola. And the uh, lower right image is an example of a copper weather vane. So it shows the, the directions north, south, east, and west, and we'll have an arrow that would spin in the wind um, and show you what direction the wind is blowing. This is also very helpful in combating crows, which are a problem with the adjacent beach and the nesting piping plovers, which are an endangered bird species. And the DCR is certainly committed to protecting wildlife in these parks and these places. And so this is one element where we can help to hopefully deter crows from um, spending time in this space. I mentioned earlier the outdoor fitness equipment. This is the manufacturer's rendering of the five pieces proposed for Sullivan Park. You can see there is a mix of lower body and upper body exercise opportunities. Each piece also has a corresponding sign. That's what these white boards are on posts. Those signs will have both images and text describing the different exercises that can be done with each piece. And as I mentioned previously, the fitness equipment will be installed on a resilient rubber surface, which will provide a soft cushion layer. These are photos of each of the proposed fitness pieces. So there will include push up bars, uh, parallel bars, a long bench, uh, which can be used for sit ups, stretching exercises and planks. There will also be a calisthenics rack and a net climber. This image is the DCR standard light fixture, which is being proposed in Sullivan Park. It's an ornamental style to match the historic character of the Revere Beach Reservation. It has LED lights. Uh, all the lights are LED. It will be powder coated green to match the existing street uh, lighting. And the overall height is approximately 20 feet. And this image is not too far from our site. This is a uh, Winthrop Shore Drive. As I mentioned, the project proposes a diversity of new plant material. The site currently is very sterile with mostly lawn and a handful of existing trees, most of which are invasive species in Massachusetts. Um, the site is also very compacted, and so this project uh, will serve to reintroduce native species and restore the site and reintroduce habitat value and biodiversity. Uh, the proposed planting list is shown on the left side of this screen. And while the project proposes removing 10 existing trees, again, mostly invasive, the design adds 63 new deciduous shade trees and ornamental trees, plus 38 evergreen trees for a total of 101 total new trees being added to the project. In addition, I mentioned earlier that the edges of the park and the existing hillside will be seeded with a meadow mix 
which includes native grasses and native wildflowers. And these will be attractive to pollinator species such as birds, bees, and other important insects. And at this time, I will turn it back over to uh, Danielle Mellet from the DCR. Thanks, Skylar. Oh, a little background noise. OK, um, so total park improvements are estimated to be approximately $2.75 million for construction, um, which is Commonwealth's investment. The project is currently in DCR's five year capital improvements plan and has been programmed to start construction in fiscal year 2023. Um, so the project schedule moving forward, comment period begins tonight and will go for about two weeks. The last day to submit comments is December 13th. You'll see that slide again with the website information at the end of this presentation. On Wednesday, December 1st is the Conservation Commission hearing where the notice of intent will be presented for this project. Um, and then March 11th, 2022 is the date targeted for completion of the bidding documents and the bidding and construction period will be from March 2022 through June of 2023. So we anticipate construction completion by June 2023. Next slide. Uh, so thanks, Danielle. And I'm, so my name is Dan Cushing. I'm the DCR Director of Public Engagement. And uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming tonight. This is going to start our Q&A session and comments. Um, so uh, we can take in comments either through the text chat, so you can see that function at the top, and beside that is the raise hand function. If you raise your hand, I can unmute your uh, mic. I can um, give you permissions to unmute your mic, and then um, you can provide us with comments then, um, or you can type your questions into the chat as well. And I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out uh, this Monday evening. Um, Scholar, do you think we could actually go to the next slide too? So just for some more additional information as we uh, allow people to uh, play with the settings and uh, get ready to provide their comments, um, you can find tonight's recording and slide deck uh, after the meeting. We will be uploading them to mass.gov slash DCR slash past dash public dash meetings. And uh, you can submit your public comments, uh, mass.gov slash DCR slash public dash comments. You'll have a deadline until two weeks from today, Monday the 15th. Um, and then if there are any other questions unrelated to this project, um, mass.parks at mass.gov. And um, yeah, we're gonna, we, the plan is to be here until 7.30. Um, we're happy to take in your comments or questions now live. And we see, I see a hand raised. This is uh, Rep uh, Jeffrey Turco. So I'm gonna give you permissions to unmute your mic. There you go. Thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, presentation. Um, this is not yet my uh, area, but assuming uh, after the next election, this will be included in my uh, legislative district. So uh, obviously I have a particular interest in it. Um, the, the question I had is behind the land you're talking about getting an easement behind the neighboring building. Are you looking to get that easement um, at no cost or are you looking, would there be a cost of um, money paid to the developer for that? The reason I ask is as I look at it, it seems that it's really something that benefits the neighboring building more so than the overall scope of the project. And so I'm just kind of curious what the thought process is and what you ask, what you expect in terms of the finances. Thank you. Thanks. So the easement that we're requesting through the building is actually an easement that the public could use to access the park as another means of um, entry, but it's also the entrance that we need to use for emergency vehicles and maintenance vehicles to access the park. There's quite a bit of slope um, and grade change from the from Revere Beach Boulevard. So the only way for our emergency vehicles to access the park is through that easement through the building. So that's that's the reasoning for requiring or needing that easement access, but and it should also come at no cost. All right, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate that. I look forward to hearing the public's uh, feedback on this uh, proposal. I, I think it's pretty nice. Thank you. Thanks, Representative. Um, so I see that we also have a question in the chat as well. Um, more of a suggestion. So uh, Catherine says, uh, 
suggest closed trash receptacles due to rodents. Um, could we uh, speak a little bit to um, trash receptacles um, if, if included? Danielle or team? The, the trash receptacles that we are including um, are standard trash receptacles that our operations maintenance staff have requested. They're easily maintenance and access so that they can remove the trash quite easily, um, but it's something that we could certainly look into. Thanks. And um, yeah, so uh, we still have uh, plenty of time to answer any other questions or uh, any other comments that people would like to provide. Um, thanks again, everyone, for joining. And um, uh, we could wait a couple of minutes, and then um, if there aren't any additional questions or comments, I believe we would conclude the meeting. And um, uh, I'm trying to be respectful of everyone's time tonight. But uh, please, uh, you can use the uh, chat function, or you can raise your hands. I'm more than happy to take in comments. Um, Yep, so we can uh, wait a little bit uh, to see if anyone else has any other additional comments um, before concluding the meeting. I'd say uh, 640 if there aren't any new ones. Um, and Skylar, do you think we could just sit on the uh, additional information slide so that people, yeah, so we can just show the, the links and additional info before uh, getting off. So I see that a chat came through. Um, There's a uh, Rosalie Vincent, who uh, former representative of the area and um, a, a supporter. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the work on this and look forward to seeing its completion. Thank you for joining the meeting tonight. Uh, we really appreciated your help and um, uh, I believe you you helped in securing the um, the earmark for this project. So we we're very grateful for um, your advocacy for this area. And uh, thanks for coming tonight. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Um, and thanks for the nice comments as well. Um, so with that, I think um, we're good to head out from this meeting. I believe that this is. Uh, all the comments that uh, have come in so far um, and we still have more opportunities to take in your comments as well. Uh, as mentioned, both the recording and the slide deck are going to be online. Uh, we're going to have the comment period for the next two weeks. Um, and if there are any additional questions or concerns outside of the scope of uh, this project, um, you can email mass.parks at mass.gov. Um, with that, I guess uh, we can conclude this meeting. So uh, thanks to the project team. You guys have been putting in great work for this project. It's looking great from my perspective. And uh, you know, thank you everyone for joining the meeting tonight. Uh, any any final words, uh, Pam, Skylar, Danielle? No, I just want to say thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you through the public comment period. Thank you. Have a great night. Yep, thanks. And uh, Catherine, uh, Catherine just said, uh, glad to see so many trees and uh, pollinators will be added. So uh, thank you and uh, thanks for joining as well. So um, all right, with that, I think I'm going to close out the meeting. So uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.